Mr. Fucking Framston with a one, two, three. Wow, and he's looking at me. Okay. Yeah, mate, you have got some tone on you when you actually do try. If I put you on the spot now and said, sing me a song, what song would you sing? I'd sing a Starry Starry Night just because I know how much you like it. Do you know, we got in the lift the other day and I was with my team and this woman had Starry Night Vincent Van Gogh as her um, Van phone Gogh. case. Van Gogh. Van come, go, come, go, it's fine. Um, and she had, is it not Gogh? Vincent Van Gogh. I thought the GH would be like cough. No. And that's okay, well. often that's a mistake that a lot of people make. Like fuck Will cough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> uh, and I started singing Starry Starry Night. Yeah. She didn't know the song. Um, but she had the... Th- oh. She liked the yeah, artwork. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but obviously not, two not different. everyone would yeah, connect yeah. the... Yeah, yeah. The no, actual song's called sorry, Vincent. Sorry, no. Yeah, it is because of Vincent Van Gogh. Anyway, Vincent thanks Van for that. Um, today, Jack, I want to talk about something that I'm seeing come up a lot. Now, often what we love, and I think what I hear from people that we train, both internally and externally, is if the call runs in the perfect way. So if I say, "Here's the problems that I solve." And they go, yes, problem number two stands out for us. Wonderful. That looks different for everyone. Could you give me an example? Before we know it, the call works pretty smoothly most of the time, yeah? Mm -hmm. But often, if we imagine a sales conversation like the ocean, sometimes we've got to sail around a little bit. And as we're looking under the surface for that problem treasure, we might say, "Mm, there's there's a chest down there with a problem. It's got a bit of seaweed on it does not present mm-hmm. itself like a big shiny problem. So I've just sailed past it. And when you listen to mm. it back, you're like, no, 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 back there. That was the problem. You now that was long-winded. It. Do you know what I'm talking about? Or do you think I'm drinking again? I think you're drinking again, but that's another story for another podcast. Um, yes, not... people people miss <laughs> the problem, don't they? Don't they? <laughs> they? Is that rum in your cup? Uh, they miss it but so many times, and I think it's like hindsight is a beautiful thing. It's it's gorgeous, actually, on reflection. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things that, that is it, pe- people get to the end, and it's like, ah, you had many different lanes, and you chose the wrong one. But I like the analogy. I like where you're going with it, with the uh, the ocean. So give me a bit more on that. Well, I can give it you in a story if you like. I'll give you, I did a bit of call coaching with someone in my team this morning. She's new and we're at that phase of you get this beginner height and then you get, mm. it drops off to sort of a bit more like mediocrity and then it sort of drops off a cliff altogether. And the reason it drops off a cliff altogether usually is because you're overwhelmed with, there's a thousand different techniques I could use here, which one I'm overthinking it, blah, blah, blah. Lots of reasons for that, right? So anyway, doing a bit of call coaching to see what the, the cause of that might be. And what happened was the call went something like, here's the three problems I solve. You're probably going to tell me you don't have any. And the prospect said, yeah, I don't have any. And there was a crafty move here, right? Crafty veteran black belt move that was played. Fair enough. Do you mind if I ask you one last question before we go? Yeah, go on. When you look at the way you're doing things at the minute, what's maybe one problem that jumps out? And the guy went, hmm, probably... This when we start a new project, there's things that just don't work properly at the start of a new project. Now, that didn't present itself as the list of three problems that she gave, but it was a problem. If she'd mm. said, what's a problem that you've got? He answered the question. There's a problem. So he'd actually tick the box that that's the start of the call. But what she did was she said, okay, but it sounds like you figured out a way to fix that. And he went, mm, sort of, yeah. And then, okay, well, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Thank you for taking the time. Over. The call was over. Now, if we put that in the real world scenario, I love these situations where you put this in the real world scenario, Jack, right? So you come to me, I'm the doctor, and you say to me, uh, I'm having trouble sleeping. And when I do sleep, I don't wake up feeling very restful. If I said to you as your doctor, you've probably thought of a way to cope with that, haven't you? And you went, well, yeah, I just have more coffee in the day, I suppose. And I went, okay, well, yeah, just do more of that then. And the call yeah, yeah. and, and the but, conversation ended there with your doctor, you'd be like, 
something went wrong there. Exactly. So I'm sure you see it as well as I do, that, that, that kind of thing where you're just totally missing the problem because the call hasn't matched up in the same format that you were hoping. So what do you think is happening? What do you think the cause of that is? Well, I, I think in an ideal world when you're cold calling, you, you expect that, especially with the way that we deliver it, here's a problem buffet. Take your pick. And some people will play the game, but also you've got to remember that we're not speaking to logical human beings at this point. We're talking to the chimp part of the brain. We're talking into the bit that's um, bristling with pride and ego and vanity. Who are you? Who is some stranger? I don't want to tell you all my problems, but I'll engage in a conversation because I like the way you've gone around it. So it's like you've said it before, like fishing for problems. If we're sticking with the... Uh, the the underwater theme here but you're like fishing for problems okay so you're like trying to get them that's where your one last question is i'm trying to get you to start giving me it, it might be the uh it might be the bait so it's like symptoms of the problem or you might give me the full thing but in, in a different bit it could take five to ten minutes just to even get that problem but i think one of the one of the big places where people go wrong is they like disqualify it far too soon Okay, so so they'll say things like, okay, like, okay, so it sounds like you fit that. Okay, so it sounds like everything's going to end up perfect. Okay, so it sounds like it's not a big problem. And I know the logic behind it. You hope you're going for knowing the hope that people are going to go, no, no, no. And there is a there is a right time and a right place to use moves like that. But if you've not got somebody opening up, you've not built that rapport, that trust isn't there yet, and you don't know that it's a big enough problem, well, you actually want to start unpacking the problem. So. So let, let's roll that out. So that, that example that you that you were speaking about there, you said, okay, if you had to pick one problem at the moment that, that you're facing, what does that, what, what, what's that? What would you choose? Oh, God, I'd say like when we kick off a new project, um, the, the sort of the gathering of information, the way that first phase works of a new project, it's, it's kind of messy, clunky. There's probably things that we could definitely do better there. Okay, when you kick off, that's interesting that you say that. So new projects, the first phase. I guess, what's an example? What's the, the most recent project you've kicked off where you've seen that? Um, oh, gosh. there's pro Wow. I mean, we did a project about six months ago where the start of the project just didn't work smoothly. And because of that, the deadlines all got pushed back. Now I've got freelancers in the team that are on a freelance wage. They get paid hourly. There's people in the team who are sat around in our internal team not being productive enough. So there's this kind of funny melting pot of paying too much for not much happening. Um, hmm. So, yeah, so there was some real impact to that. Cool. And then we're taking them down that path. So all of a sudden you're talking about like maybe money, money being wasted, resources being wasted, time being wasted. So I'm taking all of these different things down, but I'm getting a real life example of it. So if you're giving me a real life example, well, then I'm going to say, actually, this is something that he feels. And the fact that you can relate to it, we, we're, we're kind of looking at that heuristic availability for you to say, yeah. yeah, this is something that I see six months ago. So then I'm going to go down that path of, okay, is it just something that happened six months ago? Has it happened before? Do we think it will happen again? What happens if it happens Mate. again? What's the impact? Blah, 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 blah. We get Mate, excited. You know, we did have that fallout, but I am liking you a lot at the minute. There's something about you that I do like. Do you think we're back there soon? I think okay. we're back to where we, where we, the golden days. You mentioned something that's so interesting. The order of what you said was so interesting, right? And I was talking about this before with someone as well. If I said like, on this project, this happens, right? So I'm like, on this last project, like from time to time, the implementation of the project doesn't work very well. And you said to me, how often does that happen is your first question. That would have been a very different conversation. Oh, it happens from time to time. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's not. Right, okay. We're, at, we're into like a processy logic type conversation. But you said, give me an example of the last time that happened, Right. So I'll put, again, I'll put this in a real world scenario. If I said to you, Jack, have sad things ever happened to you? You'd go, yeah. So I've had some sad things that have happened to me here and there. I've experienced sad things. Okay. But if I said to you, instead of asking that as the first question, Jack, tell me about the saddest thing that's ever happened to you. Mm. Oh, shit. I've got to give you a real live example of something really sad. In the business setting, in the call that you just played out then, 
it might be tell me the most frustrating thing that's ever happened to you. I'm not going for give me examples of sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. I'm like, give me an example of one time that you want it to be better and let's stay there. Let's anchor down mm. here. Yeah. And then, and then we're thinking about like what the, what the future is, what happens if that happens again, what's the, the risk. And it's like, I'm always thinking like, where are you? And we're big fans of gap selling, but where are you? Where do you need to be? What happens if you don't get there? What is the cost of the problem? Like things like that. Like, um, one of the one of our clients at the moment off on a bit of a tangent, but we'll, we'll come back to the fishing definitely. Um, is we're, we're working with a marketing agency that um, wants to get in front of boring businesses in in that sense, um, and they're very industrial, manufacturing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I said, like the bit is one of the things we have to think about is like think bigger. So a lot of these industrial companies are owned by 60 year olds. Okay. So we're selling the marketing. Do you need more customers? Yeah, no, maybe whatever, but actually they're 60. They're probably going to have to retire soon or sell their business. I'm thinking about the outcome. What happens if they can't, like if somebody comes to buy their business and they have that conversation, it's all like, where do your customers come from? Word of mouth. Well, there's no predictable revenue stream. So how do you put something in place? It's that age old phrase of sell the sizzle, not the sausage. Marketing, LinkedIn, email, whatever it is that you're selling is one thing. But the outcome is you can sell that business efficiently and then retire in Skegness with the rest of your family. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, such, such, such a good point. And that comes back to this idea of sales as therapy, doesn't it? You wouldn't get that if you had a very generic sales conversation. Okay, great. Okay, great. Like all that sort of like stuff where you're not really diving deep enough. But if you sat back and you're like, look, you're in my chaise long now and tell me where it hurts and what have you done to try and fix it. And when you look forward to the future, what's going to stop you getting there and you go into that sort of gap selling depth, that therapy depth that's required, you're going to anchor down on some treasure and you're going to dive down and you might not even have to open it that hard. It might just open for you. I've been Zach Thompson. Mm. I've been Jack Frimpson and fishing is a nightmare. <laughs> Love this guy so much. Cheers guys. <laughs>